The City of Phoenix holds community budget hearings throughout April, allowing residents to comment and make suggestions on the City Manager's trial budget before final decisions are made. This public discussion is among the reasons the City's budget so closely matches the community's highest priorities each fiscal year. Uh, this proposed budget uh, is, is something that I'm, there's some things in here that I'm really, really excited about that you're going to see on the video and we'll continue to talk about. But, you know, out of the, out of the gate in the proposed budget, uh, the hire of 110 police officers and 90 firefighters and funds to continue to uh, and actually uh, complete the Northwest Light Rail extension off of 19th Avenue. And, and several other items that are in there. I will say that the proposed budget and the budget that will be adopted at the end most certainly will be at least a little different. And that's a good thing. That's called the public process at work. We want your fingerprints to be on this budget. And, and so we want, we're hoping that, you know, for those who are interested, you can fill out a card. We'll ask that you come over to the mic and uh, so that the camera can also catch you as you, uh, you know, give your, your, your comments. And uh, our job is to be here and, and to listen. So uh, I, will, I will hand the microphone over to, to Thalda Williams and then we'll ask our Deputy City Manager to also introduce himself as well. Thalda Williams. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Last night we had uh, the District Court of the North Area and I had two people show up. So I am delighted to see all the faces here today because what the councilman said is absolutely true. The budget changes because we listen to what you have to say and what your priorities are. So just being here and, and making a statement can make a big difference. So don't be shy. Fill out a card, come up and speak, and let us know what's on your mind and what your priorities are. It, it's, it's up to you. It's a public process. And we really, truly do listen to what you have to say. Uh, it means a lot. So again, thank you for being here. Uh, I know we're anxious to get started. Uh, Rick Neymart is here, from the, who's uh, Deputy City Manager. Been around a long time. I can tell you a lot of great stories about him, but he won't let me. But thanks, Rick, for being here. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm just going to go over a, a couple of quick details. Um, so I'm a deputy city manager and I'm part of the city manager's management team for the city. I've worked for the city since 1986 and I have not seen a budget stay the same from this point in the process through to the end. In other words, every time we have these public meetings, which I've gone to for 29 years in a row, um, the public comments always have an influence on the outcome of the budget, which you said is absolutely true. Uh, and so we really appreciate your input tonight. Si alguien necesitan traducción a español, vaya para atrás. I want to make sure anybody who needs Spanish translation can uh, receive it. And um, this is one of 12 physical meetings being held. So this is the only, isn't the only one tonight. And as uh, Vice Mayor Valenzuela mentioned, uh, people can also provide their input online. Um, it is a regular part of our process to get feedback. And we'll be taking our own notes here tonight. Of course, it's recorded. But the entire mayor and council, not just the two here, will see your comments in minutes. So you'll have an opportunity to talk to everybody by uh, participating uh, tonight. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to watch a brief video that outlines uh, what is in the trial budget. And then uh, we're going to call uh, the cards of those who filled out uh, cards. So if you wish to speak and did not yet fill out a card, they're up here in the front, and we're happy to take your uh, comments. And then I uh, also want to just ask city staff members in the room to raise their hand. We've got a lot of staff people here, a whole bunch of them, who are here both to listen to your comments, but also if there's a question that, that we might not be able to answer up here, want to uh, uh, refer you to them. 
And up here with me is Rick Fries. Uh, he is the Deputy Budget and Research Director, and the Budget Department is very involved in putting together this proposal, so he knows way more than I do about the details of, of what's in here. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and start the video, and then we'll take your card shortly after. Everyone and welcome to one of a dozen hearings on the city manager's 2015-16 trial budget. Input from our residents is so important and helps shape what will end up being the final budget for the next fiscal year. The final budget is important because it provides the plan for how the city will spend taxpayer money and how services that you depend on could be impacted. I'm really pleased with this trial budget because it represents a year of really hard work. Leadership by the mayor and council to make some tough decisions, our employees who took concessions and have worked hard to save money, and our partnership with our residents to bring a balanced budget for 2015-16. Why is a balanced budget important? It's required by state law and city charter. In this budget, there will be no cuts to the city services that you count on every day. I think it's important with this budget to know that we brought it into balance without cutting any services and we can actually add some very important things for the community. Even with state fiscal actions negatively impacting Phoenix costs and revenue, and with the sunset of the emergency sales tax on food on March 31st, the budget is balanced and important additions are being made thanks to the hard work of everyone. The funding for the city budget comes from different sources. It's not all coming from one place and, and it's divided into three main areas, the general fund, enterprise funds, and special revenue funds. Examples of general fund city departments include police, fire, the library, parks and recreation, and streets. Enterprise fund departments include aviation, water services, solid waste services, and the convention center. Special revenue funds account for designated sources of money for a specific purpose, like sales tax dollars for the hiring of police officers and firefighters and funds for public transit. So when you look at all of those areas together, that's really the diverse mix of all the things that makes up our city budget. The mayor and city council took action early on, leading us to a balanced budget. That includes eliminating 162 full-time general fund vacant positions last December. For a second year, additional employee compensation concessions at just under 1%. And over the last several years, the city has eliminated nearly 100 management positions and cut overtime costs by more than 50%. The efficiency efforts by city staff have been remarkable. The city is less than $2 million away from reaching its 2015 savings goal of $100 million over the past five years. The mayor and city council have also led reforms of the civilian pension system. In total, we can expect to see a savings of around $830 million over two decades thanks to the actions already taken by the mayor and city council along with the city pension board and voters. This will have a positive long-term impact on the budget, although there is still more work to be done. In addition, the zero-based budget review process, looking at every program, has led to $1.2 million in savings for 2015-16. Every line item in the budget was scrutinized, which allows the city to find ways to save. Among the savings, $600,000 by closing two courtrooms where the number of cases has dropped considerably. $225,000 saved in the finance department by relying more on technology and reducing postage costs for mailing monthly statements. $200,000 in street transportation by analyzing signage and determining which road signs are unnecessary to install, maintain, or produce. These are just a few of many ways that staff has found to improve efficiency. 
To see the full list of savings, check out the budget summary packet provided at these budget hearings and is also available on phoenix.gov. One of the biggest challenges the city faces this year has to do with what's happening at the state level. In an effort to balance its budget, the state has shifted costs and reduced revenue to cities like Phoenix. That has led to a $6.3 million negative impact on the city, which in turn eliminated a $4.3 million surplus, which would have been used to address important city needs. This created a $2 million deficit. To balance it out, here's what the trial budget suggests. Holding off on replacing some older city vehicles and equipment, along with slowing the growth of the city's contingency fund, which is still at its highest level in city history. Here's a look at the new services proposed in the trial budget. First, let's look at the general fund. The budget adds $14,000 for implementing full-time recreation at the county-provided Cofelt Rec Center. It's located at 19th Avenue in Buckeye. That means the existing rec center will be filled with kids year-round. In the area of innovation, the budget adds a business analyst to begin preparations for Phoenix 311, which would provide a centralized information center as well as identifying technology needed to implement a unified municipal services card. And many residents feel that protecting the public should be the city's top priority. That's why public safety amounts to 71% of the general fund in this trial budget. This budget adds an additional $2 million for 40 hours of police officer training for every officer. Now to dedicated public safety special revenue funds. Due to the fact that these funds will be balanced next year, the budget includes the hiring of 110 police officers in 2015-16, which will increase the size of the police force from where it is today. The council also approved a plan to hire 90 firefighters next fiscal year after hiring approximately 75 this year. Now let's look at dedicated Phoenix Parks and Preserves Initiatives funds. Those funds would provide maintenance for three new desert preserve trailheads, creating more opportunities for residents to enjoy our preserve trails. From the Development Services funds, which is paid for by building permit and inspection fees, is this proposal making for a better customer experience in planning and development services with improved technology and training and more staff to enhance the electronic plan review section and the front counter service. Now to dedicated transit funds. The light rail is seeing more riders now than ever before. The proposed budget would fund rail operations for the new Northwest extension to 19th Avenue and Dunlap. Out of dedicated aviation enterprise funds comes an important improvement at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. It's one of the 10 busiest in the nation. The trial budget calls for the addition of a dedicated team at the airport to analyze noise impacts of flight activity, assess any proposed changes by the FAA, and to reach out to the community to solicit feedback and exchange information. Out of the solid waste special enterprise funds, the trial budget calls for operating a composting facility which will divert several tons of green waste per week from the landfill. That facility is scheduled to open next year. But the list of community needs continues. Among them, police body cameras, addressing homelessness, restoring library hours, after school programs, support for arts programs, park maintenance, and street maintenance and street landscaping. Any budget requires trade-offs and street landscaping is an example of that. It is important to keep our city beautiful and safe by making sure trees and shrubs along the roadways are maintained. Right now, that happens when residents make a report, but that could soon change. The council will soon vote on whether to bid for the service, which means the roadways would be regularly maintained three times a year. Although funding is not currently available to increase this service, 
The Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee is evaluating additional options which would increase the frequency of street landscaping service with added costs estimated to range from $1.5 to $6 million. Additional funding sources would need to be identified. So the 2015-16 trial budget is really good news. We balanced the budget with no cuts to services. And in fact, we've added some things that are important to the community. But we always want to be looking ahead. And so we have a five-year plan. We forecast ahead. And we see that we have some issues to deal with after this year. One of the biggest challenges to the general fund, public safety pension costs. Much work has been done on the civilian side, controlled by the city, but the state-controlled system still faces challenges. This trial budget assumes phasing in added public safety pension costs over the next three years, allowing city services to be preserved. Also, revenue growth will be affected by actions taken by the state on income and sales taxes. The city is planning ahead on both of these issues and will work hard to address them over the next 12 months. Keep in mind, the budget hasn't been adopted just yet. Your input is important, and the City of Phoenix wants to hear from you on what the upcoming budget should look like. Twelve public hearings will take place this month across all council districts, and you are encouraged to attend. You can also send your comments or questions to budget.research at phoenix.gov, or to reach out to us by phone, call 602-262-4800. You can also comment on social media by using hashtag Phoenix Budget. Thank you for being part of a very important process. The City of Phoenix is committed to its mission of improving the quality of life in Phoenix through the efficient delivery of outstanding public services. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, we're going to call cards now. If uh, when you get called, and we'll call ahead, so you know you're coming up next after the that person. If you wouldn't mind coming up to this microphone up here, and uh, please uh, speak very close into the microphone because it's not that loud. Thank you very much. I don't know if I said it, but uh, just in order for us to be able to get through everybody's uh, comments, if you could please limit your time to two minutes, and I'll give you a warning if you're, you're getting close to that. Thank you. So, so the comment, uh, the, the comment is uh, maybe there should be a discussion about the video first, and uh, for the I think to be consistent, uh, you know, we'll, we'll let's let's go by the cards, and if we need extra time, we can do that. Does that sound okay? Yeah. The question is, ask to be sent when you have an opportunity. That's a good point. So, if the questions are not asked through the cards, then we have an opportunity to ask at the end as well. So, the first card. Thomas Vaughn, thank you for being here, Mr. Vaughn. Uh, followed by Sue Soto and Regina Nixon. You want this facing you or facing me? Which way is Gavin? It probably will break. Okay, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, one doesn't relate to the uh, Human Services Department per se, but the dues for seniors, members of the senior centers doubled this year. Now, I, I don't know how many senior citizens belong to all the senior centers, but it's a substantial number, and I don't know what that money was used for, but I'd like to know. 
Uh, the second comment that I have deals with uh, the light rail extension to Dunlap. And you have a figure of $1,200,000 to operate the expansion of the light rail. I don't know where that figure uh, came from, how it was derived. Does it cover the entire fiscal year? Does it mean that the light rail is going to be active July the 1st? Uh, the, is that the total cost for the operation expansion? Are other cities sharing in that? In other words, Tempe and Mesa are members of the thing. Do they participate in that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I just wonder, you know, kind of thing. See if it goes to Glendale, then Glendale starts bearing the whole cost of that operation that way. And the other one was the aviation expansion for a manager and two planners uh, to respond to noise complaints. I understand that you have a pretty good issue with that right now particularly involve the, the uh, historic homes communities. Uh, and I can see the response. I've heard that you have developed some good facts to substantiate their positions, uh, but I don't know that this necess necessitates hiring three high-level staff to in perpetuity. It seemed to me it'd be more better to be just be a temporary Thing till you get it settled with FAA on what's going to happen, maybe for a year. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so let me let me just address as much as I can of your questions, and then if the council members or, or Rick have anything to add, or any of the staff in the audience. Um, so the dues for senior centers went up last summer as part of this process last year, and some of you might remember that we had a budget shortfall of thirty-seven million dollars which meant that if we didn't close that shortfall, we'd have to make substantial cuts to a number of programs across the city, probably including senior centers. So as part of the total package to balance the budget last year, our employees took pay and benefit cuts. We cut some uh, efficiencies and some minor programs in the city, and we also raised some revenues, one of which was the, uh, the senior center dues. Um, and it was just an unfortunate way we had to uh, balance the budget. And our, I think the choice that the mayor and council made in the end based upon our recommendation was better to raise the fees a little bit than to have to cut back on those services. And uh, I think the general response from the community in the hearings was absolutely, I am willing to pay more to keep the senior center open. So that's on the senior centers. On the light rail extension, uh, the light rails uh, under construction, we're making great progress on that extension. It's not going to be open until late 2016, or not late, I'm sorry, early, sometime in 2016 in the spring. Sorry, early 2016. I didn't mean late 2016. It will be open before the next fiscal year, which is why there's money in here to start it. The money, the to, revenue to operate that is uh, paid for, we pay for the operation of the light rail based on our proportional share of miles in the system. So both Phoenix and Mesa are adding miles to the system in the next year, and both of our uh, costs are going to go up as a result of that. And so this is our estimate of when it opens, when we're going to be, uh, how much it's going to cost to operate based upon having to run additional uh, trains in order to keep the frequency up and have additional operators and folks who maintain um, the system. Councilwoman Williams sits on the, the uh, board that governs uh, Metro. I sit on the management board and actually we just went through the budget this week on the board and reviewed those uh, staff additions to get ready for that. So that's how that works. And then finally on the aviation item. Um, one of the things we discovered as we went through this recent problem with the, with the flight paths changing and impacting people, we discovered that we did not have 
uh, the right resources in our aviation department to be able to take on and handle these changes and really get a good understanding of them. When we get uh, new information from the FAA about changes in flight patterns, it's very technical information, and that information is given to us in a very technical form, and our staff have to go through and analyze and figure out what the real impact is. And the bottom line is we don't, and, and then also have good communication with the community about it and uh, talk about different alternatives. Unfortunately, we really don't have the resources to do it, and we learned from this experience that we need to ramp up those, those resources in order to better serve the community and hopefully prevent these kinds of things from happening in the future. It also will help us to address those things going forward since we currently have a, you know, a major issue going on. I don't know if either of you need to correct anything or, okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Sue Soto, followed by Regina Nixon and Suzanne Thrain. Hello, my name is Sue Soto. Can you hear me okay? Yes. No? <laughs> I am a volunteer with the Friends of the Phoenix Public Library, and I volunteer at the Choya Branch, which is at Metro Center. So I will be speaking about library hours. Surprise. Thank you for your hard work on this budget. I, I would like to point out that most of our branches are closed two days a week, and seven branches are closed one day a week. Two of those are Choya Library in District 1 and Palo Verde in District 5. Those are both closed on Fridays. These closures are not only a waste, they are an inconvenience. The closures restrict Valley residents from being able to use the library for homework, job searches, and just be a cool place, literally and figuratively, to borrow books, DVDs, and other media. With demand for library services higher than ever, it's essential that we have daily library access. We urge you to open every library every day Thank you for your work and your time. Thank you, Ms. Soto. Regina Nixon, followed by Suzanne Thrain and uh, Dorothy Weingartner. Ms. Soto, I will say that I, I agree with everything you just said also. Uh, these are, you know, they're, they're incredibly important and uh, and which brings me to this reminder, you know, you're, you're a volunteer with the, with the Friends for uh, the Library, uh, and we have several budget hearings, and hopefully many people are, are, are advocating for our libraries. Uh, I, I'll, I'll speak for all of them, but certainly the Palo Verde Library in District 5, right there in the heart of Maryville, it is a cool place. It's part of the Maryville Community Center, and there's a swimming pool, and lots of great things happening. And, um, I'm, I'm with you on that, so we'll, we'll keep. <laughs> Choi is okay. <laughs> I, I, I have a rule. I, 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 I can debate any council member on the, but I'm not, you know, we, everyone on the council just says, okay, Thelda, you got it. Good evening, my name is Regina Nixon. I'm the Executive Director for the Phoenix Conservatory of Music and a member of the Phoenix Arts Commission. Um, and I just wanted to thank the council and the community for their support of arts and culture. Uh, in the greater Phoenix area, it's a $14 million industry. We have over 9,000 full-time employees in the arts sector. And we really think that the arts promote tourism, drive the economy, but more importantly, improve the quality of life. So just as it's important to have libraries and parks and rec centers, it's really important that our students, especially our kids, have access to creativity, team building, and make sure that they have skills that will provide them to be 21st century employees in the creative sector later. I'd like to thank Felda and uh, Councilman Vasquez, right? Veterans for that, sorry. Um, 
for your support of the arts. I know, I know you're a super huge believer um, and for really supporting our kids and our families. And I know that there's not a proposed cut to the arts budget this year. We thank you very much for that. We'd like to encourage your support in future years and also support to our community centers and our libraries. I want to congratulate you. She won the Governor's Art Award last week. So thank you for the great service you do and, and what you provide. Thank you. And we are we are huge advocates for the arts. I, I sit on uh, one of the centers for the arts uh, on, on, on the board. And, and I have to say that uh, right before coming here, uh, you know, we, we sorry, I want to get the, um, so I, I'm hoping everyone would come out and check it out. The PSA Art Awakenings, which is right off of about 22nd Avenue in Northern, that's right here in District 5, and a lot of the great things that are happening right here in our neighborhood. Uh, just the art that's coming out, and uh, it, it's good for all of us, and remember, it's STEAM, not just STEM, so thank you. Okay, Ms. Suzanne Thrain. Opportunity uh, to address you, Deputy City Manager and City Council people, and um, two minutes. Uh, I uh, would like to say amen to the library. Uh, every library needs to be open all the time, uh, and that's one of the issues that I have is that. The youth of our communities um, come right behind the first responders um, or ahead, whichever, uh, but we're not really um, addressing well enough, I, I believe, the issues for the youth. Um, libraries need to be open a lot of times. Uh, in our particular neighborhood, we have no park. And I'm thrilled that there's, uh, there's going to be some programs setting up at some other places, including the trailheads. However, um, we live near uh, El Oso Park that's had, uh, has been redone with uh, the aid of 3PI funding. And it's a wonderful, beautiful park and on the weekends and at nights, it is packed. You can go by and see that every penny spent was more than worthwhile. But if you go by um, and you really, really look, you will see that uh, there are no programs and not one. Uh, they did give it a whirl when they first started. They did the best that they could with what they had. However, that park sits between, on the police, in the police department, they put out these great maps that show you where the big red spots are, where the worst crime is. Well, this could be El Oso Park. Here's a red spot, and here's a red spot. Not one program for the kids there. Not one. Um, I would encourage the city council and the city manager's office and the mayor to put the money where their mouths are about our youth. And please, uh, take a look at that, a, a harder look. Uh, uh, the other issue is, is the quality of life issue. Is um, the, the film was great. And we've all benefited by the things that were done yes, uh, this last budget cycle. Uh, but in the um, loss of human beings, um, I would be thrilled to show you some really sad looking uh, right of ways and some uh, sad dead trees in right of ways, dead plants in right of ways. Uh, and, and I'm not laying that all on city because if you come to our neighborhood you'll see Indian School Road looks like a 
looks better than almost downtown, except we don't have all those beautiful trees <laughs> uh, and that we take care of. And half of 75th Avenue on our side is lovely because we take it, we've taken care of it. But we don't have the wherewithal to take care of all the senior citizens in our neighborhood that need help as well, senior and physically challenged people who need our help. Uh, and so we need to cooperate with the city in the maintain, maintain our perimeters and it's city inspectors. Uh, we've lost, we don't have enough people to do home inspections. Uh, we have varying, uh, whatever, how many, uh, two people left in zoning? We have construction going on all over the place. Nobody even bothers to get licenses, et cetera, et cetera. You know all of those things. Uh, when it comes to blight, I mean, how are you this year going to say that all these wonderful programs are going to be sustainable when we don't have the human beings now? So thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in another year. Uh, hold on just a second. I, I know you want all these things. Is there anything listed in there that... Uh, Children. No, that we can do without that's being recommended as an increase because we only have so much money. So what would well, you eliminate to fund some of the things that you're talking what would about? I eliminate? Yeah. Oh. Well, you won't like this one. I would eliminate the people, the technical people to do the airport right now since you've just done it. Could you wait a year? Could you wait two years? <laughs> you think they're gonna come back next year and do the same thing to us with with the airplanes coming. I didn't come and complain. They're pretty low over our property. But you know what? That's the city needs the revenue. So I would strongly encourage you to give that one a rest for a year. Thank you, Suzanne. I, I will be the first to say because you know I'm a product of, of our district. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, you know, just the upkeep of, of our district and all of the hard work. In fact, we're working really, really hard right now on a 27th Avenue project in cleaning up this area. It's a multi-department project. We have uh, Commander Robinson, who is leading the way on that as our uh, precinct commander and, uh, of course, working with all of the departments together. Uh, I, I, last weekend, I just spent some time uh, and in, in, in Maryville, we, we always have uh, cleanup events and, and neighborhood events. And so thank God for our neighborhood leaders. Um, I, I, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But, and, and, I, and I appreciate Delta's uh, question. And I, pre I appreciate Suzanne's response. That's what this is all about. It's all about sharing these ideas. It's all about putting our fingerprints on this budget because these are tax dollars that we're talking about. And, uh, you know, to, you know, I, Councilwoman just driving the question so that it's coming from a place of, of uh, you know, it's coming from a good place and we're just being proactive and just really generating some thought because we can use that. So thank you so much. So the next speaker is Dorothy. Wine Gardner, followed by Victoria Yaquez. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, comments, all libraries every day. All right, all right. So, uh, Victoria Yaquez. Okay. Followed by Chris West. Good evening. Um, my name is Victoria Jaquez. I am a, not only do I work full time, um, but I also am a Phoenix neighborhood patroller, a blight buster, and I do all sorts of volunteers. So a lot of these things that are happening, um, I appreciate. Um, the first thing I wanted to, to, to say is that um, for the police department, Thank you for hiring those 110, but we really do need more. Um, I worked, um, I volunteered at Super Bowl Central, and I interacted with a lot of them, and 
they were all there almost every day and they were providing safety for everybody, but yet I don't feel that they were uh, truly appreciated for all the work that they do while they were um, maintaining their regular shifts uh, without doing overtime. So um, I just wanted to say that. Um, now, the other thing that I did is I just did a uh, ride along with the police department um, in Maryvale. And um, the officers that I rode with were tr tremendously amazing. Um, I saw firsthand what they go through, um, how they have to change hats from one to the other, their priorities. And um, I feel that we really need more of them because um, it's really dangerous out there. Um, I wanted to say something about parks also. Um, we, again, it's Los Oso, uh, El Oso Park. Um, what I've been noticing lately is it's packed with people. There's no services, there's nobody there that's maintaining that park, and yet we still have um, illegal corn vendors that are right on the property, and they're getting um, bold. So we really need to see how we could get that taken care of. Um, and neighborhood services, that's another one. Um, thank you for uh, putting in there to make the three positions as um, regular, but we also need more because um, we as a blightbuster, we do reports, but it doesn't help um, because sometimes they can't get to those, those items. So we really need to have, I mean, we want our neighborhoods. It improves the quality of life. We like to see that they're maintained, but we need help as far as getting somebody to get out there and do those citations to get the people to uh, comply. So um, thank you so much. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you so much for all the, the hours that you put into our city. You're everywhere. Uh, you know, the Blightbuster and, and everything else, you do PNP, and just being a, a neighborhood and community leader. Uh, now, I want to remind everyone also that when when we do see things like that in our in our neighborhood in our community, it's important to pick up the phone and to and to make a phone call. Uh, you know, we have magnets out there, we have little pamphlets out there. But if you have a pen handy, you know, I, I always give the phone number. There's a million phone numbers to remember, um, but I always tell people just you know you you can put one on speed dial, and that is six zero two. 262-7446, and that's the phone number to the District 5 office. And, you know, we, we will help you connect to wherever we need to help you with. And it doesn't always have to even be a city issue. Sometimes people don't understand the difference between a city issue or a state issue, or is it a school board issue, or even a federal issue. We're never dead end. We want to help, and we want to make it, uh, you know, we, we want to do that. And I know that. Felda leads by example. In fact, she's one of the people that I, I constantly uh, talk to about this kind of thing. And if you don't mind, I'll go ahead. And Felda's number is 602-262-7444. And as a reminder, grab one of these. All of our phone numbers are on there. But I just, you know, it's important to make those phone calls. And I know that I'm preaching to the choir. The people in this room continue to do that. And thank you for, for just advocating for all of the other services as well. OK. so. We have a card here that Mark uh, No does not wish to speak, Mike Ferros and Bernie Ferros. And I do want to read the comment. Can you fix La Pradera Park, 39th Avenue in Glendale? All new light poles, more benches, ramadas, brighter lights, all at the, uh, all at the, at the, at the same type, trees, a nice park for neighbors in West Plaza. Block Watch Association, Kids and Family. I couldn't agree more. I can't tell you how much basketball I played at Labrador Park when I was a kid and even as my son was growing up. So thank you for showing up and, and advocating for Labrador Park. Uh, next speaker is Chris West, followed by Sherry Dudek and Diane Harris. Good evening, Councilman Valenzuela, Councilwoman Williams. Uh, my name is Chris West. I'm the Field Operations Manager for the Arizona Humane Society. 
as well as the co-chair of the Arizona Professional Animal Cruelty Task Force. I am here representing Arizona Humane Society, and the Arizona Humane Society believes every pet deserves a good life, and this passionate belief has driven us to serve as a critical role in the community for nearly 60 years by providing affordable veterinary care, emergency rescue and ambulance services, community education and outreach, we have given second chances and hope for countless Valley pets as well as people. Many Phoenix residents understand and know to call the Arizona Humane Society if they have a sick or injured pet, but most do not understand the vital role we play in animal cruelty in the Valley. Uh, last year, the Arizona Humane Society received in excess of 5,000 contact calls resulting in over 8,000 site visits initiated by the emergency animal medical technicians that work for me. Um, we are the ones that are normally initiating that animal cruelty call from either the public, the police, the fire department, other city and state departments, as well as outside entities such as veterinarians. The Arizona Humane Society, on average, it costs approximately $377 to get an animal through our system. Um, for example, two years ago, Christmas Day, we took in 135 fighting roosters, and two days later followed it up with an additional 60 that were initiated by my staff, whereas the Christmas Day call was the police department that initiated the contract, or contact call. We work in coordination and collaboration with the city police department as well as the prosecutor's office and it has been a wonderful collaboration for over a decade. I thank you very much for your time and please support. Thank you Chris and I know how much you have done. You've served as a volunteer, helped us come up with uh, new ordinances uh, and I know the Humane Society. They are when Phoenix goes out and has to seize an animal as part of abused animals case, um, it's live evidence. And it goes to the Humane Society and they have to care for it until it goes to court. And then if the court decides, then it can be adopted out and they take care of that procedure. But they have stood the cost, uh, I believe, of our animals. And I know I have met with some people on your staff as well as uh, some of the city department heads uh, trying to at least start reimbursing you for some of these funds because uh, I know how long it can take uh, to go through court. It can take up to a year, sometimes 18 months. It's a long time to care for an animal, uh, especially one that's been abused. Usually they require quite a bit of medical care. Uh, right in the beginning as well as, as the ongoing care. So thank you for what you do for us on a regular basis. You have been a leader in this field for a long time. I've always enjoyed working with you and the community service that you provide is outstanding. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. I'm also an advocate for our, our animals and thank you, Councilman Williams, because you've always led the effort at the city uh, on, on this very issue. Okay, so uh, now before I, I go further, I, I noticed Doug Mings is in the room. Doug Mings is the Director of Community Outreach for Mayor Stanton, so thank you for being here, Doug. Uh, Sherry Dudak, followed by Diane Harris, and the final card is Barb Heller. So that's just a reminder, if you want to speak, uh, please fill out a card. Sherry, thanks Good for being evening. here. Good evening, boy, this one's not working here. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for all coming. Thank you for allowing us to come out and speak. I think it's very, very important that we share our voice and talk to our elected officers and to the people who run our city so they know what we are thinking. My main concern is always public safety. Number one is the police department. Um, we are down so many officers, it makes me sick <laughs> and very upset because they are my lifeline. They are our service. Um, and we need more. We need to look and prioritize so that we get some officers hired for the people that we have lost. 
I love that you want to hire some officers, but the ones you're hiring is barely covering our attrition. We're losing people every year. So we need to look and prioritize what we need to do. Um, I'm very concerned that we have such a big city and we have a, a fluctuating crime rate and that we're not looking at what we really need. How are we going to get businesses to come here? How are the people who live here going to feel safe if we don't have a good, solid police force? And so I ask you to look at this over and over. Um, keep planning. I appreciate that you do work on cuts, that you work on efficiency. I really appreciate that because every penny that I put in to me is very, very important to this city. I do an awful lot of volunteer work. I do that because I care about this city, where I live, and it's important to me, and it's important to a lot of people. So I ask that you continue to look at that. Last year, you actually reached out and asked for suggestions on how you can raise money, what you can do. Um, and ideas were put in, okay, on, diff like, you changed the parking meters downtown, okay? It was an idea. I think this year I've not seen that. Um, so I personally turned in about 10 ideas last year on fees and funding and different things. I would like you to go back and look at some of the ideas that were turned in last year that were not used because I had called and asked, and they said they only could use the ideas that they had posted before everything got finally voted on. So there were a lot of ideas that were not even considered. I would ask that you go back and look at that again, because I think it's important. A lot of ideas that came up at some of these hearings were excellent. And so I, maybe everyone's not coming out this year because they don't, oh, you're not cutting my service from the senior center. You're not cutting this but I think they still are concerned. So I need you to go back and look again, <laughs> keep trying to find us some dollars, and I would like you all to advocate and educate the community that if we want all these services, sometimes we have to put a little bit more in. I belong to the senior center right here. I did not have a problem with the senior you know, membership going up because it's so important to have this center here for the services that are offered for so many people who use it. So if you can continue to look at ideas like that, uh, look at other funding, but I'd like my funding to go for my security and my safety and for police officers. And take into consideration that if you're hiring 110 and 90 are retiring this year, you're, not, you're only giving me 20 officers. We need many, many more than that. Thank you. Thank you so much, for uh, Sherry, for, for your comments. Uh, you know, it wasn't too long ago when the city had this, this idea, this understanding that it would go several years, approximately five years, without hiring a police officer, if you can believe that. So we are heavily understaffed right now. Uh, I remember three years ago traveling to DC, working with the Department of Justice, we were awarded a COPS grant, which is a grant to hire more police officers. It was the largest grant that was awarded in the country that year, and they announced it right here in Phoenix. And as great as that sounds, that was for 15 police officers. Every one police officer really ma matters and brings a great deal of value to our neighborhoods. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's 15 police officers. We need far more, and it's, it's true. Through attrition, we are losing police officers through retirement. Uh, and, uh, you know, finally, there is a plan to have approximately 300 police officers hired in the next three years. Yes, we are losing police officers through attrition, but we are going to lose police officers anyway. So finally, we are, we are hiring police officers. Now, you know, look, I, I'm with you, Sherry, and I, and I think everyone in this, in this center is with you. We need more police officers now. We need more firefighters now. Uh, and, and we are going to get there. Literally, everything that we do, we should be thinking about 
public safety first. It is a number one priority of any government. I actually believe that. And I don't say that just as a first responder myself, but someone who raised his family here. Now, I, I'll just I'll take this opportunity to, to mention the transportation ballot initiative that you'll see in August. This is an example. This is about transportation, uh, something that is near and dear to, to Thelda's heart and to my heart. Uh, more light rail throughout the city of Phoenix, but not just that. More more funding for street repair and and all of those things. If it passes, that if it passes, if it passes, uh, that will also bring an additional 116 police officers with it. Okay, so even if that doesn't pass, there's a plan for 300 police officers in the next three years. And of course, we're gonna advocate for more police officers beyond that. But just as it, and I, and I bring that transportation plan up because that's literally thinking of public safety in, in, with every opportunity that we have. So, so and, and it will bring us up to over 3,000 officers. It brings us closer to that, that point of where we really need to be. In fact, it gets us up to about 3,100, Thelda. And so it, it, that's about where we really need to be. Actually, you know, it'd be nice to be at about 3,200. So proposing a budget, to me, this is the highlight. 110 police officers and 90 firefighters in this budget. We haven't seen that in a very long time. This is absolutely a step in the right direction. But, sir, I want you to keep in mind, you can't hire 300 officers in a very short time. You cannot put them through the academy. We don't have enough officers to train them. Then you have to promote sergeants and lieutenants who don't have a clue. So one of the reasons it takes a little longer is because it, it requires a lot of training along the way in addition to just hiring and putting somebody through the academy. Uh, it sounds pretty simple, but in reality, if you don't do it the right way, you will have chaos that does not benefit the community. But we're, we're making it a priority. I'm working on it. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Diane Harris, and the final card is Barbara Heller. Thank you, Councilman Valenzuela. Ditto every word that Sherry Dudick said. Anyone here that knows me knows that my constant theme has been, when are we getting more public safety officers? And I think that the very first thing out of my mouth to Councilman Valenzuela was, when are we going to get more public safety officers? And that has been a continual holding his feet to the fire. So this is a good start. I appreciate that it looks like it may be turning around. Um, something that is not on the budget that I also appreciate the council and mayor has looked at is equal pay, equality for women in the city of Phoenix. That is very important to me, being the little feminist that I am. Um, the person who spoke about trees in our roadways. My street, personally, everyone is cutting down 50 and 60 year old palm trees that the city for the last 30 years that I have lived there has trimmed because they're in the city easement. Um, now we have giant stumps of palm trees all over my street, which is not pretty. I have contacted your office, Councilman Valenzuela, many times about this. Um, Lastly, some of you saw me outside. There is a state issue which involves keeping the buffer between the, the 300 foot buffer between liquor establishments and our schools, our churches, and our daycare centers. Right now, it's on the house. The whole floor is voting on it, except they're all at dinner today, or right now. I have a petition in case it passes that will go, go to the governor next week. If you are a city of Phoenix resident, even a city in Phoenix employee, this is a state issue. 
if you would get with me on the way out and sign this, take 10 seconds. This is very, very important to the quality in our neighborhoods. It's a 300-foot buffer that we want to keep between liquor license establishments, our schools, our churches, and our daycare centers. 300 feet is nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I signed <laughs> But uh, thank you, sh thank you, uh, Diane, and, and every member of the Council 5 team has talked with you, uh, and we appreciate every single phone call working with you to resolve all of those, all of those cases. Um, and thank you for spreading the word about what's happening at the state legislature as well. I, I, for one, have been making several phone calls and sending letters, and yeah. we all need to be doing that, so thank you so much. It's, it's worth holding my feet to the fire. Thank you so much. If I get a hug, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Diane. Sometimes it's not a hug. Sometimes it's like, I'm glad we're talking by phone and not in person. But that's what it's all about sometimes. Yeah. No, it's all good. All right, Barbara Heller. I also 100 and 50% agree with uh, how well Sherry put it and several of our other speakers about our law enforcement. Um, our, the city has no other priority as far as I'm concerned that it has to offer its citizens other than public safety. That has got to be a priority. And I see several things in the budget that uh, I think uh, should be cut because as far as I'm concerned, we just went through cutting employees, pays, employees themselves, and until those costs are given back to them, and they, uh, like she said, libraries being open, those are services that offer so much to so many that uh, when you're talking, um, you know, uh, IT projects, for centralized city information center and municipal carts. Um, these, these are things that are, aren't necessary at this time. Someone else mentioned the aviation. You know, um, so we have to put up with a little air traffic. Um, uh, some of the costs on like uh, initiative funds, park and recreation, I think some of those costs can be contracted out uh, people to answer phones for $136,000. Um, until these other things that we have cut from other people and like shutting libraries down, uh, I think those things need to be held totally off until we take care of the things that we've done to weaken people's lives. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Okay, I have two final cards. Folks who do not wish to speak, but but I will read the comment. Tamara Klein, who I think has the best handwriting I've ever seen. I applaud Mayor Stanton's pledge of funds to help the homeless, <clears throat> but exactly how much longer will this city permit men and women to sleep on uh, blacktop with inadequate water and sanitation? If animals were treated in this manner, abuse charges would be filed. Why are these conditions acceptable, accepted for human beings? It's a very strong statement, and it's, it's a great statement. And uh, so, so thank you for making that comment, and uh, something we should all be reminded of, you know, Mayor Stanton, but several others on the council um, would, would uh, you know, are passionate about these about these particular issues. So thank you, Tamara. <clears throat> and people can call two one one for services. Thank you, Barb, for mentioning that. And the final card, Vidi Hernandez. 
uh, excited about the idea of streamlining services into one card and creating a more efficient city and reducing our costs. At the same time, also applaud the investment in customer service enhancement and find ways to increase department response, training, et cetera, to gather community input. So thank you, VD, for mentioning that request as well. I believe we are we do not have any other cards, so um, I will I will just uh, give my thanks now, and I'll and I'll give the microphone over to Thelda. But you know, uh, to our deputy city manager Rick Neymar, thank you for being here, and uh, Rick Freeze, our deputy uh, budget director. Um, it's always an honor to, to be here at the Helen Drake Senior Center in our community, especially on a budget hearing. Many of you, I'm sure, probably all of you were here last year when it was a much different setting. We were balancing, we're trying to figure out how to balance a budget with such a huge deficit, a $38 million deficit, and it's a different feel this time, and it feels good, right? Uh, we, we came in for a, a, you know, a soft landing, if you will, I, I want to point a few things out. Uh, a budget that includes 110 police officers, again, I'm saying it, 90 firefighters, funding to complete the, you know, to help the Northwest Light Rail extension, which is an economic engine, and, and several other things is incredibly important. Uh, and, and I want to thank city staff, our city manager at Zerker, and you know, of course, you, Rick, and everyone else, what a lot of people may not realize that last year, this time, we really, what was forecasted was a, a budget deficit for this year of about $34 million. So lots of efficiencies have, have taken place. L lots of very, very tough decisions, sweeping 162 vacant positions in a city that is already running on its leanest government in 40 years. You know, you mentioned, you know, uh, Sherry, you mentioned the support of senior centers uh, and the fees that had to be raised and, and parking meters and, uh, you know, our, our employees, you know, thank God for our employees, uh, all of them who uh, took a pay cut, um, last, it's a two-year pay cut, last year and, and this year, all of those things helped us balance the budget this year. It would have been a $34 million deficit uh, and all many, many tough decisions had to be made and they were made and, and, uh, and we're balancing this budget and we are adding those first responders and we're doing a lot of great things and we couldn't have done it without the suggestions of people who are in this room and who fill the rooms of, of all of the other budget hearings as well. So uh, there's at least a couple of people who spoke today who I seen just a couple of mornings ago in Sunny Slope, and I would encourage you to go to every budget hearing and be heard. So thank you so much, and uh, and God bless you. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Councilman Williams. Thank you. I, I will tell you, he is a very hard working vice mayor. He has chaired or co-chaired more committees in the last year and had his finger in some of the toughest issues. Uh, so I give him a lot of credit. He is very, very busy and very active, and he always has common sense approach to it, a fairness for taxpayers. So yay, daddy. I, I will tell you, uh, the city of Phoenix, did we take in more revenue this year than last? Yes. Did expenses go up? Yes. When employees took cuts, but I will tell you, paper went up, chemicals went up, everything that we touch has gone up just like it has and everybody's uh, had no water didn't go up. <laughs> That's one thing that hasn't, but the chemicals in the water have gone up and the cost of, of producing water has gone up. And our sales tax revenue uh, is really struggling. And I, I fully believe it's because you don't shop Phoenix, everybody's shopping online. And when you shop online, we don't get the tax revenue. And I, I <clears throat> have said we have got to change that because as time goes by, things aren't going to get better. Costs will continue to escalate and we have got to find ways to either find new revenue uh, 
and recognize the fact that our revenue is diminishing in many areas. Um, we are not being competitive with some of our suburbs. And uh, the, the food tax went off. Everybody's happy. Well, not everybody was happy about that because it did, if it hadn't gone off, it would have been enough to pay the deficit. Sherry's right. She's reminding me that a couple times this evening. Uh, but uh, I just want people to recognize that in the future. We, I, I will tell you, our city staff has done a remarkable job. When we flip out the say, more with less, we're not kidding about it. Um, they have to all taken on extra, extra duties. Uh, departments have been more than half in personnel. However, their duties have not been. And it's, it takes a lot of people. The city only provides one product, and that's water. Everything else is a service, and services depend on people. And we have outstanding employees, and I don't think people recognize or give them enough credit for what, all the things that they have done and the commitment they have made. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you <clears throat> to all of them, because we would not be the great city we are without the employees, nor would we be the great city we are without all of you. It's the people that participate at these hearings, that do the volunteer, that run the block watches, that are on patrol in the neighborhoods. That's what makes Phoenix better than all the other cities. It's that personal effort and the pride as Phoenicians we take in our neighborhood and as a city. And as long as we keep that, we will find solutions. We will work together. I know the city, we are looking out for more grants, for more foundations, for more corporate assistance because they have a lot to gain from this as well. And we haven't tapped into a lot of those resources in the past. Well, it's time for some of those major companies to recognize that they have a responsibility if they want this city to be a great city in the future, uh, a place that will continue to grow to benefit them. And so I think you're going to see more and more of that in, in the future. But I don't want to belabor this. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you for what you do. Uh, and I'll turn to give Rick the last word, which he loves. Bar Barb. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's online, doesn't it? Yeah, it's online. Yeah. Actually, I wasn't going to have a last word tonight, but let me just say uh, thank you again for everybody being here. Thank you to the city staff who are here this evening. And uh, as I said, uh, the budget will change as a result of your input. So thank you very much and have a good evening. You've been watching a community budget hearing held recently in Phoenix. For questions, comments, or ideas, please visit phoenix.gov or call 602-262-4800. You can also send feedback or videos through social media at hashtag Phoenix Budget. This video can also be seen online at phoenix.gov forward slash 11 or youtube.com forward slash city of Phoenix AZ.